Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and I'm here to show you how to install the Corsair MP600 Core XT, how to install it in your system, set it up in Windows, and make sure that it's accessible, as well as testing it to make sure it's running at the right speeds and temperatures and other things to consider along the way. Now, I've done some separate guides on things to bear in mind with your drive installation because it can make a big difference where you're installing it. Now this is gonna vary from motherboard to motherboard. In this instance, I'm using a gigabyte board and you'll see that there are a number of different spots on here for installing an M2 NVMe SSD. And the top one is usually the fastest spot. On this motherboard, that's actually a Gen 5 drive spot there. And that's interesting because this obviously is a Gen 4, so we're not gonna use it in there, but Usually installing it as close to the CPU as possible will actually give you the fastest speeds. So if later on you find that your drive isn't running at the maximum speed, it may well be because it's not installed in the top spot. So I'd recommend just considering that. If you're installing multiple drive, that can also have an impact on the overall speed. I've done a separate detailed video on this and the considerations of it and how to check. So I'll link to that video in the description where you can find out more. But for this video, we're installing this drive on a gigabyte board, which comes with little plastic latches, as you saw a second ago. You may need an M2 screw, which is a tiny little screw that you can use to screw the drive down instead on older boards. If you're using it on there, you may well find you don't have the way to attach it because it's not included in the box. So you might have to buy some extra screws, but you take that little cover off that you've seen there with a heat shield cover, and then you're just going to slot the drive in. The installation of the drive is actually really simple. It always is with these drives. They're nice and plug and play. Just plug it in. There's no cables to worry about, no power cables, no data cables. It just slots in really easily. And then you just need to screw it down and replace the heat shield that's on top. Now, this is really important because those heat shields can make a big difference to the temperatures. Make sure you remove the sticker beforehand. There's a thermal pad on the other side that contacts between the drive and the top of the heat shield. This helps to disperse the heat and ensure that the drive runs as it should at maximum speed, which is obviously important. Now, if you're wondering whether you should remove the sticker from the top of the drive, in most instances that doesn't actually make a difference. I've tested it. It's very rare that it actually makes a difference and it may well void your warranty in some instances as well, so it's just better not to remove it. You should still get a good contact between the heat shield and the drive. So obviously then we've got to make sure it's all installed and set up. Everything's connected, as you can see in this Corsair 5000D, which is awesome, by the way. Check out the link in the description to that. And then you can then head over into Windows. Now you see when we're in Windows, my drive isn't recognized. I've got one drive, which is my boot drive, and then I want to have the MP600 as a secondary drive. It's not there. If you hit the start key and type disk, you'll see there's an option for initialize disk in Windows 11, which is one way of doing it, but the better way is to go disk management. So look for the disk management tool. And once you go in there, hopefully if everything's working nicely, you should see it pops up with initialize disk and it will recognize any new disks that you have in your system. I've actually installed two new drives here which is why you see zero and one up here. But obviously we're focusing here just on the Corsair drive. So what we need to do is essentially we need to create a new simple volume. So you're gonna format that drive, give it a letter, and that will then ensure that it pops up in Windows and Explorer and they can actually use it. Because although the system's recognizing it, Windows isn't because it's not actually formatted and it's not ready to go. So it is appearing in Windows, but it's not working. So you right click on it, click new simple volume, and then go through these steps to give it a drive letter. So in this case, I'm just gonna choose E, and then I'm going to give it a volume label, which is just a name for the drive. You can put whatever you want in here, maybe games or photos or videos, whatever you're gonna put on the drive. I'd like to use the name of the drive itself, just so I know which is which. And then you just click next, and that then goes through and it formats the drive, and basically it then should make it pop up in Windows, and then you can use it in Windows Explorer and start negotiating your way around. Now the next thing that I like to do and I'd recommend doing is to ensure that the drive is running at the best speed possible. So here I'm using some benchmarking tools. This is Crystal Dismark, which is a free tool that you can download. I've also got hardware monitor running in here because essentially what I was doing is just making sure the drive runs at the speed that it should, but also more importantly, it's not getting too hot. And you can see from this test that the initial data shows it's getting 4,534 megabytes per second read speed. Now, this is a great tool for testing this. The maximum speed that this drive should get 
is around 5,000 megabytes a second. So actually, this is a reasonable speed. It's quite close to the max. So that's to be expected. You're not necessarily going to get a max. But if you find that you've got half that speed, for example, 2,000 or lower, then it may well be that one of the problems that I mentioned earlier. If you have too many drives installed in your system, sometimes this can negatively impact the number of lanes, so the CPU PCIe lanes, that the drive is getting, which then can half the speed and basically make it like a Gen 3 drive instead, or older, and so it will run slower. But here you can see this is actually running at the speeds that it should be, at least at the top end, so with standard transfers you should find this is fine. Now this is a good tool for testing it out, just to make sure everything's running. It's not essential, but if you're not quite sure whether your drive's running at the right speed, then this is one way to do it. Now another thing to note is if you haven't got to this stage, because the disk initialization and disk management haven't worked, then it may well be down to BIOS settings. So restart your PC, mash the delete key, go into your BIOS settings, and then look for your NVMe configuration. You may find some options in there that are stopping it from working. You'll have to refer to your motherboard manual because it varies vastly from device to device, but that could be a problem. Now I've run through these tests, you can see the drive temperature at the top there is getting a maximum of 49 degrees. That's actually really good. But this shows the importance of putting the heat sink on because that shielding will help to disperse the heat and help it run and cool. If it gets too much hotter, you may well find it thermally throttles. So this could be another reason why the drive's not running as it should be. So if you haven't used the heat shield or you haven't got good cooling in your case, then this could be one of the problems. So this is another good way to test it. Again, this is hardware monitor. I'll leave links in the description to that. And also, don't forget to check out those other videos which talk more about the speeds and how to benchmark your drives and other things. Hopefully this has been helpful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Subscribe if it was useful. Thanks for watching.